Tim Legler set to join me right now on the Sports Bash live on 97.3 ESPN. We got a lot to discuss. Let's get it all in quickly here. As uh, Joel Embiid was asked after the game, he said, this offense is unstoppable was the word that he used. Now, Legler had joined me about two weeks ago when they made the trade, and we had some questions. I wonder, Tim, how many of the questions have been answered? Uh, Embiid says unstoppable <laughs> offense. Are you concurring about how these teams are going to figure out what to do with these two guys? Yeah, listen, I, you know, he's right in, in, in respect that when you have two guys that command that much extra attention to deal with them, there's only so many bodies on the court defensively, and that's really what Joel Embiid was alluding to. You know, it's pick your poison and how you want to defend them. Um, to stay unstoppable, I mean, let's let them play against some of the heavyweight teams in the league and, and some of the better defensive teams, and, and, and you get a better idea about that. But his point is, is well taken, and through two games, I think the thing that stood out to me the most was how seamless it looks with these guys playing together, it, it almost looks like they've had multiple seasons together under their belt. And they're only two games in because two ball dominant guys, it's not like that automatically blends right away. It takes some time to figure that out on the court and they haven't needed any time. They've been unbelievable. Obviously they controlled the game against the Knicks by just getting to the foul line, the entire game, which is so important, particularly in playoff basketball and they make them at a high rate. That's the other thing. Guys can get to the line, but when you convert at the rate they do, you're not having any empty trips. So you're getting teams in foul trouble. You're getting into the bonus early. You are, you are getting points on those possessions, and you're giving yourself a chance to set up and play half-court defense. That's what getting to the line does, and you have two of the elite guys in the game doing that. And I think, Mike, the one thing that I was really curious about, and at least through two games it hasn't been an issue – I really was worried about the impact of Tyrese Maxey, and obviously yeah. there's been no impact. He's been fantastic, and it tells me a lot about him. You know, he, he didn't pout, hang his head. He didn't take this as some sort of a demotion that the ball's out of his hands. He is just a basketball player, and he's saying, listen, I'm just going to go out and play. My high pace, high energy, and he's playing with a lot of confidence here before the trade, and that has not dipped at all. That's, to me, one of the biggest takeaways of the first two games. You're going to need a third guy to be really good every night. doesn't always have to be the same guy, but the teams that win it, usually it is. That third guy, you can count on a certain level of production. He hasn't been affected. So that's a huge deal for the Sixers. Now, Tobias is struggling, obviously, but if Maxie's given him what he's given him now and he looks that comfortable in the game, is coming that easy to him playing with Harden, Man, that's a great sign for Philly. Yeah, and you, you mentioned Maxie the last time we talked about, you know, he's not going to have the ball as much. How has his game kind of almost evolved in these two games? What is he doing differently now that he's not the main ball handler? Well, one, one big thing is he's not lurking back for outlet passes. And, you know, when you're playing as the primary ball handler and that ball comes off the rim, your nat natural inclination or goes to the net is to funnel back toward the ball to create an outlet pass because you're the guy that's going to, you know, be initiating the, the, the ball up the floor. Now you take a look at his, he takes off. That ball comes off the rim, and now it can be advanced to him as he's moving up the floor where he can get an outlet pass from Harden. He's at half court. And you're talking about a guy with elite-level quickness, great finishing ability. So he's getting opportunities now early to think like a scorer. It's actually, ironically, something I think I said to you, and I know I've said to a lot of people since they drafted Simmons, I always wanted to see more of that from Ben Simmons, less of him coming back to be the guy that has to bring the ball up the floor because I thought his impact in the open floor by advancing the ball to him, it simplifies the game for him, and it also takes advantage of his elite-level speed, and Maxi has speed like that. So I like the fact that he's not, he's not encumbered to come back and hunt down the ball and then go initiate. He can just go and just go be a basketball player. You know, he's, he's taken on that role that, you know, he looks kind of like a Jordan Clarkson, like a Jamal Crawford type of player, and he looks like he's having a lot of fun doing it. And, you know, when you're a point guard and that ball is sort of taken out of your hands as the, quote, point guard, because those guys love to have their own team to run, that's a, that's an adjustment mentally. It's an adjustment. You know, do you have the game to adjust to being off the ball? And he's been fantastic for two games. It's just such a great sign. And it, 
it really actually makes me think his ceiling's even higher than I thought it was. And I was already starting to think this guy could be, you know, perennial all-star eventually. He, he's even better than I thought because he, he didn't even blink. He just moved off the ball more, and he's playing like an attacking two guard and playing at a really efficient rate. Hey, uh, you look at how dominant they were, but uh, two bad defensive teams. Also, nobody had any tape on how the Sixers would use these guys. Now you see how the Sixers have used them for two games. What what adjustments can teams make? To, is there an adjustment? No, I think what, what one thing you're going to have to do, you know, based on what you've seen through two games. If you're you know you're, you're looking at film and you've got a two game package to look at. One thing that you absolutely have to do, you've got to do a better job at um, two things. One, you've got to see if Harden, you know, can be that guy that can beat you from deep. I, mean, I know that he's a great shooter, but with like all great players, you've got to take the lesser of two evils. And him coming off on these tight dribble handoffs where he's turning the corner downhill with nobody like right there in front of him to make sure – he has to at least veer sideways or toward half court. If you just let this guy get a, a handoff or a pick and roll and he's downhill immediately, he's too strong and he's too good of a passer, particularly with those late finds. Once he gets almost to the restricted area, his ability to lob, pocket pass, or kick out for three, it, it, you're just at his mercy when you allow him to do that. So I think you, you, you almost have to dare him to be more of a high-volume shot taker from the perimeter. And then, you know, it's easier said than done with Embiid, to, you know, just to try to get more bodies in those gaps. It's kind of like Antetokounmpo. If you don't have people connected with their feet are in the lane, you, he's going to step through the gap and he's going to get contact every time. And, that, and it's been very difficult for the two teams they played to be able to pull that off. And I'm not saying it's easy because – these are two of the most potent offensive forces in the league, and they're paired up together. So, But my job as an analyst might just <laughs> to make it sound easy because I don't have to do it anymore. <laughs> I bet you you would have liked, liked some of the looks that uh, some of these guys oh, are getting. My God, Friday night, Maxie had the ball on the wing. And I, I literally, I said, I mean, it's not a knock on Maxi. I mean, he's just not, that's not his game. But he might turn into a three-point guy because he's just going to get these looks. And he's so fast that he can take the ball to the basket. I mean, he is getting ample amount of space now and I think people don't realize because Harden was so ball dominant in Houston that he was looked at as this unselfish guy it's almost like when Iverson was in Philly he had nobody else to to give it to here he's very willing to give the ball up it looks like oh he definitely is and that's one of the things I admired about him when he went to Brooklyn and you know he, he paired up and this is a guy that he, I mean what he did in Houston for that stretch of years was unprecedented in this league there had never been a guy that ball dominant or that dribble dominant, that was also a guy that was that high volume of shot taker because no one plays like that. And he's probably the only guy in the league that could pull it off because you've got to have incredible strength to be able to handle the ball in tight windows like that as much as, as he was. His usage rate was off the charts. So his strength, his range, and then his handle is so tight and low to the ground. But then finally, his, his vision at the end of it, if you do play it right, he can still beat you with a pass. So he's so unique. But then he went to Brooklyn, and he would go long stretches in games. Like six minutes, he'd be out there in, an, in a quarter straight and not think about shooting. Because, he, because what was given to him, because of the way they were playing him, was opportunities to facilitate. He doesn't have a problem with that because great scorers know at some point they're going to need him to do it, and he's so good. He's not going to have a problem giving you a 12 or 15 point quarter or more. So he's always going to get his numbers, which is important to scorers, but he doesn't really obsess over it. He just wants to make the play. That's the right play for his team. And I know that he's got to be salivating playing with a guy like him. He's never played with a big that's this multifaceted. And, and look, and he's never played with a guard that was this dominant as a scorer at that spot. So Right now, hey, listen, two games in, they're happy. They look like they're having fun. They look pretty driven. Harden looks like he is really motivated right now with how hard he's playing and how aggressive he's playing. And he's just destroying what's in front of him right now. Uh, so far, so good. And now it's going to come down to, are they going to have enough guys step up and make these open shots? 
that they're going to ultimately get because teams are going to start loading up the lane. And now it's going to be Ken, Ken Seibel and Harris and Maxi and Cork Maz and whoever else you want to put out there make enough perimeter shots where they then do become unstoppable, as Joel Embiid described. Uh, he's Tim Legler, ESPN. Good uh, breakdown of the first two games. Wednesday night at home, uh, James Harden's first appearance in Philadelphia. You can hear it right here on 97.3 ESPN. Legs, appreciate it, man. Anytime, Mike. You got it. Take care. Tim Legler, everybody, here on the Sports Bash. 